Hello, hi, a very, very happy good evening. So this is your Krishna ma'am. I'm here. We're going to talk about the story of life on Earth, and that's biology. So today it's the last day for your quick revision session. So we'll be done and dusted with your CBSC board and your Monday. Uh, Monday on Monday you have your CBSC board paper. So before we begin, so I hope you guys are preparing really seriously, sincerely, because uh, your board marks are equally important. Don't just take board for granted. So when you cannot score in board, so people don't even respect you. So if you can do something much more bigger than the board then why can't you do board well so please keep that in mind and please do the board well as well so today i'll solve one question paper which uh, i'm only taking the tough question paper i'm not taking the easy one because i believe and i trust and i have faith that you will do the easy papers well so when i show you a bit of tough paper so when i solve that so you will have a bit of confidence so ultimately for all papers you have a few instructions and advice from me so of course i know advice is free and everyone keeps giving it but still i believe some amount of advice is always needed at certain age right Okay, so today we are here talking about the class 12 CBSC board. Uh, it's, a, it's a sample paper that I'm going to revise. So basically, there are 13 questions in your paper. and I'm going to discuss how do you write, how do you represent. So what are the points you should include if the question is like this? So sometimes the question can be very, very huge and probably you don't know how to uh, decipher it. But the answer can be as simple as anything. So we're going to see how to interpret, how to decode and how to write it. Fine. So here we go. So first of all, the question paper in your instruction is here. So I want you to read the instruction properly. So sometimes some things you already know, but when you reread it again, you understand something even more better. So for example, you can say 11th and 12th bio I teach. So I teach both botany and zoo. I teach both class 11 and class 12. So you might think that I know everything. But trust me, before coming to every class, I have a preparation phase. I just revise what I have to say, right? So every time I read the same line I know, I understand something else and something in depth. So that is the point or that is why you have to read the things even if you know it, right? So first of all, your question paper has three sections, A, B, C. I'm talking about the paper pattern of your CBSC board, which is due on Monday. So it has three sections, section A, section B, section C. And out of all the sessions, the total number of questions that you have to attend is 13 questions. Fine? Okay. So, section A has six questions, two marks each. Okay. So, you'll have to write your answers according to the marks in CBSC. If it's two marks, make sure you write two points. Okay. So, whichever point is important, you'll make sure you'll highlight it. Fine. So section B has six questions and it is of three marks each. Section A, six questions, two marks each. So six twos are 12, right? Section B has six questions, three marks each. Six into three is 18. So 18 and 12, how much it is? 30, right? So section C has one case-based question for five marks. So you have one case based question that is a five mark question. So you're very, very lucky. So it is not that they will give you one question like describe the life cycle of plasmodium. No. So when you have a case based question, you have five subdivisions and you have to write five answers. So which means each question carries one mark here. So it's the best way to attempt a paper. So this is how your paper is divided into. So now here in the sample paper that I'm going to discuss, so let's see how many you have. Okay. Okay. So we are starting with section A. So certain pathogens are tissue or organ specific, justify with suitable examples. So when you see the question, first of all, you'll be like, oh, so where does this come? Okay. Tissue or pathogen, it comes with human health and disease. Okay. Somewhat we are nearby. Okay. Somewhat we know, but we don't know exactly how to fill it. So the problem with CBSC is you can write in your own words, you can frame your own language, that is fine, but you cannot beat around the bush. So if it's for two marks, you have to write it in two statements or you have to comprise it in one statement. So how will you explain or how will you justify this particular statement? So certain pathogens are tissue or organ specific, the statement is true. Yes, definitely certain organs and pathogens are tissue specific because they have adapted resistance to survive in that particular organ or tissue. So that will be a statement one. 
okay so this question comes from human health and disease not exactly from your ncrt line so this is, line is your ncrt line but the explanation may not be in ncrt but i am giving you the explanation so the explanation is this so certain pathogens are organ or tissue specific because they are adapted to survive against the resistance in that particular organ or tissue so organisms learn to survive in the acidic ph of the gut right example your salmonella typhi it uh, it can survive only in the intestine so it has learned how to survive in the intestine right so these are some of the examples so this question is easy so what will you write here so have you understood what to write yes So this comes from human health and disease fine okay so why because they have adapted they have adaptations to overcome resistance in that particular organ or tissue fine yes Hi Ramesh Kumar, a very very happy good evening. Thank you so much for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so the second question here is name a microbe used for statin production and write the uses of statin. Okay, so it's not station, it is statin. You like my class very much. Wow, thank you so much. So that was a beautiful compliment for the weekend. Thank you so much, Ramesh. So I would request you. So please help me support, spread my channel to other people who are in need. So it's a free platform where you get all your resources. So thank you once again. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Okay, so statin is obtained from the East Monascus purpurus. So when you write the name of a microbe, so make sure you underline it. Write the use, it is the blood cholesterol lowering agent. It is the blood cholesterol lowering agent. Fine. So you have an internal choice. Either in question number two, you can attend this or you can attend this question. Both are question two. You have been given choice for question two. So you have been given one, one question is what is the statin, where it is obtained, what is the use. The other is your advice is sought to improve the nitrogen content of the soil to be used for cultivation of non-leguminous terrestrial crop. Recommend two microbes that will enrich the soil with nitrogen. The other is why do leguminous crops do not require such enrichment. Either you can write statins. So I would prefer statins are very easy. You can write. So if at all you forget Monascus purpuris and you have to attempt this question. So how will you answer this question? This is not tough either. So you, I have a non-leguminous garden. So I have to improve the nitrogen content. How will I do? So that is the first question, right? So I will recommend blue-green algae or cyanobacteria or frankia to be introduced in my crops, in the soil of my crops, right? So cyanobacteria can be your nostac, oscillatoria, etc. Right. So why do leguminous plants do not have these problems? Because they have nitrogen fixing bacteria in their root nodules. They have nitrogen fixing microbes in their root nodules itself. So it becomes a part of the plant here. So that is why they do not require such enrichment. Fine. So we are done with the second question. So question three, so the structure of the drug is given. So you have to tell me where or what, which group of drug it represents. Okay. So which group of drug it represents? It represents a group of drugs called as the cannabinoid. Fine. 
okay what are the uh, so which group of drugs does this represent so one example under cannabinoid you can give that is your morijara so what is the mode of conception nasal inhalation you can take it through nose or you can take it through your mouth so i write nasal inhalation or oral intake so what are the harmful effects that will have or name the organ that will be affected the heart so basically it is the cardiovascular system that will be affected right so here we come to question four why do we prefer to call secondary wastewater treatment as biological treatment so it is a part of the sewage treatment this question so first of all because microbes are involved microbes in the form of flocks are involved and they reduce the organic content in the sewage water by your BOD. They, uh, they consume this biological oxygen demand from the organic ions in your sewage treatment, right? So that is what you have to mention. Aren't the question simple? It seems tough, but it's simple. But unless and until you don't write the complete answer, you will not get full marks, right? Okay. So you have a chance to get 35 and 35 in biology. So make sure you get it. Okay. Yes. So, label the three tires. So, this is from your um, organism in population. What is this, this and this? So, this is the pre-reproductive age. This is the age pyramid. This is the reproductive age. And this is the post-reproductive age. Right? So, what type of population growth is represented? So, the growing population or the expanding population. Yes? It's easy again? Yeah. So, please, this is how diagrams can come in, in your question. So, please go through the diagrams. So, here we are in question 6. What is brood parasitism? Explain with an example. Or what is the high altitude sickness or right to symptoms? So in these two, you can either pick this or you can pick this, right? So what is brood parasitism? So here, what happens? The parasite's egg, the parasite lays egg in the host nest. It also makes sure the egg resembles the host egg, the host egg size and shape. So this is one half. For this you get one mark. With the help of an example, for the example you get one mark, yes you are absolutely right, orchid and raza. So the example is your cuckoo bird or the cuckoo bird, you can pronounce it either way or you can write coil in the bracket, right? Yes, so this is attempted. But if you don't know what is this or you don't know how to write this, so you have the next part. What is high altitude sickness? Write its symptoms. Yes, ma'am. A very, very happy good evening. Thank you so much for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. So what is high altitude sickness? So as you move up on high altitudes, so your oxygen content decreases. So you run short of breath right so it's a type of your physiological adaptation so you overcome this with the help of physiological adaptation that is by increasing your rbc production and scavenging whatever oxygen you have yes you're absolutely right so what are, what can be its symptoms nausea headache, shortness of breath. Yes, all these are the symptoms, right? So, section A, six questions are done. 
and I believe it is easy. Yes, we have answered all the six and I told you how to write to the point. There is no beating around the bush. Fine. So now we'll go to section B. We again have six questions. Okay. So here in the seventh question, you have an option. Internal choice is given. What is cancer? How is a cancer cell different from a normal cell? So this has one mark. This is one mark. How do normal cells attain cancerous nature? This one mark. So totally three marks. Section B, each question carries three marks, right? Okay. What is a cancer? Cancer is uncontrolled growth of cells. So how do you define? So cancer is uncontrolled proliferation of cells. Fine. Okay. How is a cancerous cell different from a normal cell? Exactly, you are right, Orchid. So, your cancerous cells, they do not have uh, contact inhibition or in other sense, they lack contact inhibition. So, they do not undergo differentiation. They do not maintain your nucleus to the cytoplasm ratio and they migrate to other regions that is metastasis. So they migrate to other regions. Whereas right now in my kidney you cannot find my liver cells right but this can move. How do normal cells become cancerous when they lose this property of contact inhibition or when the proto-oncogenes get activated? So these are the two ways how a normal cell can become cancerous. Yes, you are absolutely right. When there is a gene mutation only, proto-oncogenes get activated, right? Absolutely good. So here you have another question. Prevention is better than cure comment. So sometimes you have orders of questions like this when you have prepared for each and every name, each and every concept and a generalized question like this would spoil your brain. It will spoil your mood. Okay, so we are not going to answer this question because we know enough about cancer. But in any case, the first option was also odd. How do you answer this? Prevention is better than cure. The statement is true. Because for a lot of disease, because for a lot of disease, there is no complete treatment, right? And for those disease where you have treatment, you have side effects. It has a long-term effect on your health, right? So the body or the organ loses its original functionality. You have financial burden. You fall into weakness. So these are the reasons. If the question is general, write your points in a general way. Right? Yes? Fine. So the first question of section B is done. So we go to the next one. So question 8. How many microbial pathogens? So the question seems very big, right? So you also think, oh, I am supposed to write very big answers. But definitely not. Let's see how. Many microbial pathogens enter the gut of the humans along with food. Okay. What are the preventive barriers to protect the body from such pathogens? So this carries two marks. What type of immunity do you observe in this case? One marks. So what are the barriers here? The first barrier is your mucus. Second is your skin. Then you have your lysozyme. Then you have the HCM. All these are here to kill the pathogens. So mucus in the saliva, lysozyme in the saliva, skin and HCM. These are the barriers. What type of immunity you observe in the skin? Innate immunity. I am writing only the key points but you will write complete answer. Fine? Yes. So question 8 is done and it was pretty easy. So I go to question 9. Okay, so question 9 is very simple. It is only one line. So what does H, D and 3 refer to in the enzyme HIND3? 
So you will write hind three is a type of. You can actually give examples of physiological barrier. So orchid, if you are only writing physiological barrier, you will mention the example skin mucus, etc. Otherwise, if you can write skin mucus HCL, well and good. So, so to some extent, physical barrier and physiological both can come because I said mucus also here, right? Okay. So first of all, please mention hind three is a type of restriction enzyme or your molecular scissors. So D stands for Haemophilus influenzae, right? So this is Haemophilus influenzae. H stands for Haemophilus. I N stands for influenzae. D stands for the type of strain. And 3 stands for the number of restriction enzyme found from this particular bacteria. Okay, right. So question 10. Can you think of a scientific explanation besides analogy used by Paul Eldridge for the direct relationship between diversity and stability of an ecosystem? So it is like a bit of tricky question, right? So they are first asking you to think about uh, uh, explanation, not about the exact point of Paul Eldridge. But here, how do you frame the answer that is important? First of all, in two words, explain what Paul Eldridge said. So Paul Eldridge spoke about your rivet poppet hypothesis. So, just in one or two lines, explain what is rivet profit hypothesis. Now, write the analogy used here can be the trees and the insects in the trees. Insects which live on the trees. So, when the trees are slowly declining, we will also uh, see a decline in the insect population like ants, right? So, that can be your best example. Fine? Yes? But you have to mention rivet profit hypothesis when Paul Eldridge come. Yes, Orchid, you're absolutely right. So, question 11, okay? So, this is going to have three subdivisions. Okay, so I'll put a question mark here. What is the difference between endemic and exotic species? One mark. What is the example, uh, uh, what is the expanded form of IUCN? One mark. What does red indicate in the IUCN red list? Difference between endemic and exotic species. So endemic species lives only in a particular region. What is the exotic species a foreign species which is unintentionally or intentionally or accidentally introduced by humans? For example, from US I bring a particular species because it looks good and it became invasive. So that is my exotic species. Fine. So what is the expanded form of IUCN? International Union for the Conservation of Natural Resources, right? So you write the explanation. What does red indicate in the IUCN red list? It talks about the threatened and the endangered species. Fine? Yes? Great. So we are the last two questions that's left for us. Identify and explain the steps A and B, A, B, C in the given diagram. Wow, what an easy question. Yes, yes, Orchid, you're absolutely right. So you are fantastic. So you gave me all the right answers. I hope you come out of your board exams with flying colors. So A represents the step denaturation. So you will explain what is denaturation, where the two stands unwind and here we use the temperature as uh, 95 degrees, right? And this is your annealing, so where the primers come and bind and this is extension. Fine? Yes. So we go to the next set, that is the last one, section C, right? So, section C is case-based questions, right? Fine. 
So in case-based questions, a paragraph is given to you. First of all, so question 13, the restriction enzyme digestions are performed by incubating purified DNA molecules with restriction enzyme at optimal conditions for that specific enzyme. Agrose gel electrophoresis is employed to check the progression of a trans uh, restriction digestion enzyme. So here the uh, DNA is negatively charged molecule, hence it moves towards the positive charge. So they have given a passage which they want you to understand. So what you have to understand in this passage is that they are talking about the biotechnology process, the recombinant DNA, how your restriction enzyme is used and how your um, uh, gel electrophoros is being used here. So based on that, they have a set of five questions. So five questions, five marks. So each question has one mark here, right? So there are four DNA fragment size, that is 2,500 base pairs, 2,000 base pairs, 1,500 base pairs, and 1,000 base pairs. Out of these, which of the following base pairs moves fastly towards the positive electrode and why? The smallest of this will move towards the positive electrode because the concept of gel electrophoresis is that the smaller particles will move quicker. Right? Yes, exactly. Mention the role of agrose gel electrophoresis. It helps in the separation of DNA fragments based on size alone. Okay? How are the separated DNA fragments visualized? So, separated DNA fragments are visualized under UV light when you have used EDBR. Yes? How are the separated DNA fragments finally isolated? Meaning, how do you isolate it from the gel? So, you use a particular step called as elution. Fine? Yes? So, we move further. So, you have an option in a case-based question. You have A and B. A tedium bromide, E-T-H-I-D-I-U-M. So, please be careful. So, probably here it can be a typing mistake. But when you're writing it in your paper, so please write it correctly because spellings are very important. Okay, or good? So, they have given you another passage. So, if you're not very thorough with your gel electrophoresis. So, they have again spoken about your insulin. How insulin is being made in bacteria. Right. So based on that, you have five questions. What is the main challenge for the production of insulin using recombinant DNA technology? So the main challenge for using your uh, producing insulin is assembling them is to attach the A and B chains because the pro uh, pro peptide or the C stretch has to be removed. Right. Yes. So insulin is used for diabetes and it's extracted from the pancreas of pig in the earlier days. So what is the disadvantage? It can cause allergy. So when you slaughter these animals, you can have pest infested. Sorry, you can have pathogens in these animals. And it's not ethical, right? So these were the three reasons. How did the American company Eli Lilly finally make your insulin? They synthesized the uh, ch chain A separately, chain B separately, and then they joined it. What is functional insulin? Okay, so the functional insulin thus produced is advantageous because they do not cause any allergy and they do not even cause an immune reaction because it is from the humans themselves, right? So I hope the entire paper has been discussed and it's pretty easy and clear to you. Yes? Okay. So last but not the least, so I would like to please promote this. So please do watch this video on heat pox. So it talks about heat waves and the monkey pox that is running right around us in a very trending fashion. So please watch this video. So it's been uploaded in all your eCarriot Point channels. And please do watch it and please do comment in the comment section. And for all those preparing for needs, so please buy our books. So please look into our books. And if you find it expensive, so please open Google Books. You will find it in a very, very cheap price. Yes, thank Thank you so much Orchid. So you are a very very uh, super smart student. So you have Predika Jain. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my session. So I hope you guys come every day. So every day we meet and for if you guys are preparing for NEET. So please purchase the revision test papers because you should know how to manage time and you should know how to sit for three hours and give your exam. And last but not the least if you have your siblings in class 10 who has done with their um, 
a particular board exam so our 11th batch is starting for day neat as well as je so if you feel the fees is pretty high they can give us scholarship test that is cp sat so please spread the word and i hope you definitely like my session so ronak chahan says he's sorry for being late it's completely fine so please do watch the recorded session so i'm grateful for you guys for being with me this evening so all the very best for your exam on monday so monday at 5:30 we are having your board paper discussion so i hope your paper is easy and you guys will do wonders in bio because bio is very interesting and very easy compared to other subjects i believe so so all the very get best guys and my sincere prayer that you guys come out with really good marks and good colors so thank you once again and please don't forget to like share and subscribe so stay tuned till monday 5:30 so until then this is me signing off so thank you and bye